But if you're going to current modern day advocate for children to marry adults, I'm not going to trust you around my kids. If you're somebody who's consistently dating very young people newly out of high school and you're a much older person, I'm not going to trust you around my kids. And I know this hurts a lot of people's feelings, but the truth is I can't trust you around my kids because when it came down to it, when you had the opportunity to protect a child, you did something even worse. Sneeko is facilitating. He's he's the reason the child will now be harmed. And he's advocating for those parents to basically pimp out their children to adults. I'm not going to trust you around my kids. So if you guys didn't hear Moist Critical Charlie, who I don't really watch and over the years have warmed up to a little bit more, but he's still not my favorite. Just like not for me, right? But not not because of who he is, just because like the content's just like, it's his commentary isn't always what I want to see, but I check in on occasion. Okay, so shout out to Charlie. Charlie had a conversation with Sneeko recently, which I did not watch because every time I hear Sneeko, Sneeko talk. It makes me want to claw my eyes out. Shout out to Sneeko. Still rooting for him. Maybe one day he'll grow up. Charlie made a video. You guys wanted me to watch it. You said he was pretty introspective. And apparently it's his thoughts on everything that happened. Because after the debate with Sneeko, he decided to leave the internet. But not because of the debate with Sneeko directly. It actually was something that was already coming. But because the timing was the way that it was, everybody on the internet thought it had to do with Sneeko. So I thought we'd go ahead and watch this together. Evans to Betsy. What a week, huh, sports fans? Holy Toledo. Yeah, so Moist Critical's in a big oopsie poopsie situation here. It reminds me of the time in Moonfall when KC Houseman sacrifices himself and dies of cringe to become the moon. Yeah, so, uh, being serious now, since this has become such a big issue, I've been in a lot of drama recently. I'm in hot water and I'm biting on the fart bubbles that pop up in the bathtub here. It is a lot. So let's start with the most recent one today. My retirement. I didn't know I was retiring. That's news to me. I'm as shocked as all of you are. I had a ton of fun last night playing a game called Clickleding, which is basically like a cuckoldry simulator, but for clicking against like the Lorax in a hotel room. And I just did like an old school gameplay commentary video. I, I was bubbly. Full of jubilation, I posted it today only to learn that I'm just a big old fucking liar. Liar, liar, plants for hire, I suppose. I Apparently, and I didn't know this until I posted the video, Everyone was under the impression that I was quitting the internet. So I started screaming. Isn't this amazing? This is what I say. The internet's like playing a game of telephone. You know what I mean? It's like playing a game of telephone where the internet decided Charlie's leaving the internet. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Charlie's going to leave the internet. But then here's Charlie telling us he's not leaving the internet. I was like, oh, okay. That's also interesting. But like, that's what's so funny is like, yeah, I didn't know Charlie was going to leave the internet. That seems weird, but also not really. Lots of big YouTubers are retiring from the internet. It gets exhausting. So at first when I heard the story, I was like, cool, good for Charlie. I did. I, I really did think good for him. I thought good for him, touching grass, being with family. He's probably so rich. He doesn't have to worry about it. I saw it as good news, but then the sneak part of the internet saw it as like a win, like, oh, Charlie got debated off the internet. And I was like, oh, I didn't think about it that way. Like, I didn't think about him getting bullied off the internet. I thought he was just happy, rich, and uh, gonna enjoy his life. But okay, so he's not retiring. Scratching at the hair on my chinny chin chin, wondering, when the fuck did that happen? Was I sleepwalking? Do I have somnambulism? Is this some kind of, like, you know, fight club situation? But instead of, like, Tyler Durden, I have fucking... Charles Turden here that's just making wrong announcements. It turns out the patient zero behind all of this was a post Jackson made announcing that I would be leaving the podcasts, mm. which is something I thought about periodically for quite a few months now, mainly because I started to recognize that I was becoming the very thing I'd make fun of with being chronically online. Like I just was always online and the podcasts were a big proponent of that. And I just kind of wanted to scale back the amount of time I spend online. So, and I kept Jackson in the loop the whole time here about where my head was at and last week I told him hey man I think this is going to be where I, I hang up the jersey you can put it in the rafters mm. throw it in the dumpster but I think I'm just going to be you know sailing off into the sunset here and just reducing the amount of stuff I do online which he completely understood so he made the announcement just letting people know that and then that got spun on Twitter and Reddit as Moist Criticals taking an indefinite hiatus and quitting the internet literally liter literally it, literally I wish I love the internet that's what I'm saying how can we know? Okay, guys, if there's this much misinformation on the internet, then why do we trust everything we see on the internet? Why does JK Rowling fall for everything she sees on the internet? Why do these people fall for it? Why does Elon Musk fall for things he sees on the internet? 
Like, why are people falling for things they see on the internet, right? Or why are they going like so hardcore about it? Why are they like bragging like, oh, 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 oh I kicked Charlie off the internet. Oh, 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 oh. Like, why didn't you just like, what is it? Like, what is it? All my brain did was like, oh, cool. Good for Charlie. That's all my brain thought. I thought he was getting off the internet to go live his life. And I thought, cool, good for him. And then I just didn't think about it that much. But I never, I didn't really think Sneeko would have bullied him off the internet, hardly. I mean, Charlie's like a huge content creator. He's so established. Like, it's going to take more than Sneeko to get Charlie to leave the fucking internet, right? Like, there's no way. Don't know when I'll be back. He's done with the internet because of all this controversy. Uh, Patui on his grave. He's gone. When I, I, I mean, I looking at the post, I don't even know where that's coming from. It's, it's literally just talking about the podcast and me just stepping away. Like... It's not, it doesn't extend beyond that. I can't even wrap my tiny noodle around how anyone could perceive this as me being done with the internet entirely, but that's the story that they ran with and that's what most people saw, not the actual post. So everyone thought I was quitting the internet, so I posted that video that I was really happy with because it just felt like an OG old school video that made me happy. And then BANG! Just a flood of comments and dislikes all saying shit like, How could you fucking deceive us? I thought you quit, huh? What happened to leaving, huh? I just read this post on Twitter from an account that had a profile pic of t photoshopped onto Thomas Edison that said you were done and it had 50,000 likes so I know it was true and you're just a f***ing liar. I can't even just peacefully walk away from some projects without it being a massive f***ing reaction over actual nothing burger information. And trust me, no one has a palate more refined for nothing burgers than me. I have ranted about the stupidest of all time, but this was mind-boggling even for me. So to set the record straight, no, uh, I'm not retiring, despite what the experts are telling you. All I did was walk away from a couple of projects. Uh, like, that's really it. Like, that's a pretty normal thing to do, especially when one of them I've been doing for, like, eight years. I really Whoa. didn't think it was that deep, especially not deep enough for how big of a story mm -hmm. it's become with all of the wild narratives running around about the true reason that I stopped doing it. So let's get into that drama. I've talked about it on stream, I don't even know how many times at this point, but we'll just talk about all of it in this video here. So, when covering the Ava Tyson situation, I was attacked by a lot of people for not being quick enough, even though I covered it within like the first six hours. Ridiculous, 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 ridiculous. Go to therapy, expecting YouTubers to be on top of it. It's because young people probably don't watch traditional news, so Charlie is their news, which is offensive. Like, RIP to all the actual journalists and amazing people out there actually doing the work. And RIP because the internet just goes to YouTubers <laughs> to get the story. It's like, dude, there's real journalism happening here as well. You know, it's great to get YouTube. I love Philip DeFranco. I like commentary channels. But also there are actual news sources you know, you could have just waited for Charlie. You think Charlie wouldn't have personally announced he was retiring from the internet? That's what I thought happened. I saw tweets and I didn't think much of it because I only have Twitter on my computer. So I was just like on the computer seeing it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I didn't think anything of it. And I figured Charlie had made a video. I literally figured Charlie had made a video. And because I'm not subscribed to him, I just didn't see it. Him saying, hey, guys, I'm leaving the internet. You didn't even hear it from him himself. People were unsatisfied that I hadn't made a video within like the first 20 minutes of it dropping. And then when I did finally finish the full video covering all of it, it was another massive problem where now I only did it out of an obligation because people called me out. Mm. And then I also got accused of being a transphobe because I didn't use Ava Tyson's preferred pronouns, which mm. were she, her. I didn't know that. I thought just calling Ava Tyson by her name was okay. And Wait, I it is okay to call Ava by Ava. Wait. I'd also heard when I went to the Mr. Beast thing, someone referred to Ava Tyson with they. So I was truly oh. under the impression that that was okay. I, and oh, I think, I think a lot of people keep calling Ava they because they don't want to. Okay, do you want to see the irony that I've noticed? I don't know if you guys have noticed this. I've noticed that they keep calling Ava a they when they don't want to acknowledge that she's a she and they don't want to say he because they don't want to get in trouble. And so I think it's they has become like a code word. But I think Charlie probably thought they was just non-binary and didn't think anything of it. I don't think Charlie would be purposely transphobic, right? Like, I don't know Charlie. I don't watch him, but I don't think so. 
FD signifier in the chat. Let's go. Says always been in bill and bill. Oh my God. Am bill villant of this dude, but at least he's not an outright bad guy. Yeah. Same. Like, I don't think I've ever heard Charlie being like a transphobe. So I don't think that's what's happening. Uh, but let's see. I assume he just thought they was Ava's pronouns, but Ava is she, her, and it's Ava. Everyone keeps calling her Chris Tyson, and I don't like that, and I don't know why that keeps happening. And I think it's just transphobes. I'm almost positive, right? It's got to be a signal to transphobes to call call her Chris. And for that, I was annihilated by a good chunk of Twitter. And then annihilated by another good chunk of Twitter because I called out Sneeko, who was the main proponent about me for Mr. Beast to keep the collab alive. I wasn't talking about Ava Tyson because I wanted the Mr. Beast collab. And I talked about how absurd that statement was, especially given his history with fighting against the age of consent. He's been very vocal about how much he hates the age of consent. And so I talked about that briefly at the end of the video, which then changed the whole narrative for a lot of people where I never talked about Ava Tyson and only talked about Sneeko. Mm. So it was a complete lose-lose because if I didn't talk about what Sneeko was saying, I would have been called a coward for not addressing it and talking about like... Well, he was going to cover for Mr. Beast until Sneeko called him out. So, like, if I didn't do it, I would have been attacked. I did do it, still got attacked. It really was unwinnable. But from that spawned a conversation where I talked to Sneeko directly because he was very upset that I was talking about how him rallying against the age of cons consent... Listen, the only reason Sneeko, as somebody who's dealt with Sneeko, the only reason he wants to talk to you is to build clout. Okay? That is what Sneeko is doing. He's building clout. OK, there's a tiny part of him that might be introspecting, but most of him is just clout building. He only uses this as an opportunity to build clout. And I think Charlie is too nice of a person and kind of lets Nico use him for clout, which is fine. I don't think Charlie meant to do that, but it's basically what happened because Nico was not interested. Don't if he cries, he's crying wolf. Don't listen to him. OK, is arguments like defending. As I've said, since the very beginning of this channel, I'm always willing to engage with people I disagree with, and I thought that maybe there was a chance I misunderstood what he was trying to say, even though it's still abhorrent. I thought, okay, maybe he's not actually trying to defend pedophilia. He's like some kind of pseudo-intellectual debate bro who's trying to say something else. So I was willing to hear him out on it, and I talked to him in DMs, and he said he doesn't believe in the age of consent, he believes in the age of marriage, can't assign a number to it, but said that when someone can legally drive, they should be able to marry at the same time. Ooh, and transition. Would Sneeko say, so this is where you would say to Sneeko, okay, if the age for driving is 15 and the age of marriage is 15, is the age to transition also 15? Because, you know, they're like adults. Which is literally like a 15 or 16 year old, because you get your permit at 15, your license at 16, and both are way too young to be marrying. That shit is completely unacceptable, it is downright disgusting. He then said that he was happy to discuss it in a call, which I said I was willing to hear him out on, and he said that he would do it later because he was outside doing an IRL stream in Turkey. So, I was willing to hear him out, because again, if this is some kind of crazy misunderstanding, I'd like to know that no, because- Char <laughs> Charlie's so nice! Listen, in the beginning, everyone gave Sneeko enough chances. Hell, even I gave Sneeko a thousand chances. Look how nice I am. But obviously, Sneeko's just using you for clout now. That's like what he is doing. That's always what we're doing. We are using... He wants to build a clout business because he's kicked off YouTube. So you're his ability to be on YouTube still. If he collabs with you, then his face ends up on YouTube in a real way, especially with Charlie, one of the biggest, most loved content creators in this commentary sphere. Damn. It'd be really scary for someone in his position with his level of influence to be actually advocating for adults marrying and children. That's a huge- Um, by the way, lots of children marriages happen in the U.S., so y'all better pay attention to those details because they do occur here in the U.S. That's a big problem. So if there was something that he was like, trying to say but failing to do so, I was willing to at least hear it. And this is where the infamous debate came from. The debate that people are calling the debate of the century. Oh my God. I'm kidding, not a single soul on the planet said that. It's actually one of the most dog shit debates I think human beings have ever had. He eventually called me on Discord. 
I was under the impression this was just him and I talking. Oh my god. I had no idea this was going to be a debate. I thought he oh. was going to try and explain himself like, hey, no, this isn't actually what I meant. This is what I'm trying to say. I thought this was a conversation between him and I. Not oh. this kind of debate show that he was... I think I'm officially a Charlie fan. I think this might be like pushing me over the edge a little bit. Not that I'm ever going to watch him really, but like, okay. Like this feels... Like this feels... Like that innocent moment you think a person on YouTube is actually going to talk to you like a person. And then you realize, nope, quite the opposite. Putting on for his audience. Mm. There is nothing in our DMs that indicated that's where it was going. When oh. I joined the call, he asked if I was going to record it, to which I said, I can if he wants me to, but I was also down to just talk. So I thought maybe oh. he wanted it as a recording to like explain to people like, no, he's not actually a defender or advocating for that kind of thing. So... <sighs> I thought that is why he asked. I didn't know it was because it was being streamed. Especially because one of his last DMs was about how he's doing an outside IRL stream and he would call me after. To me, that says when he's done streaming, that's when we'll talk. Not as a part no. of his stream. I didn't... No. Oh, no. I didn't even know. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it because I knew it would be brain dead because Sneeko was there. I didn't watch it. Oh, no. No, this was a debate nor a stream until about an hour and 40 into it, oh. roughly somewhere in that ballpark. No. I am not a debater. I've never claimed to be one. I never want to be a debater. I've always said Based. that I believe conversations are the most productive. True. I Me mean, love a conversation. Oh my God, Charlie, no. Because debates always devolve into what side can score the most points by explaining their thought process, even if the position is wrong. Whereas a conversation is a very different thing to me. So I didn't even know that's what this was. So obviously I was unprepared for a f***ing debate. So I entered into the Thunderdome and we started talking. I made it clear that- Okay, I hold on. This is interesting because Kenny says, holy shit, isn't that like highly unethical to stream someone without telling them? So the protocol you're supposed to do is say, hey, I'm streaming, right? How many times has the ABBA called me on stream? How many times have people called me on stream? And I'm like, hey, I'm streaming, right? The proper protocol is to be like, I am streaming. Do you understand that I am streaming? Because you'd never know. And like, maybe, I don't know if Sneeko did it on purpose. Maybe he didn't even think about it. Maybe he just didn't. I don't know. I, I don't know what he was thinking. But usually it's when people call into you, especially on a Discord, you should probably say, just so you know, I'm streaming. Just in case, just to get their consent. Uh, because you never know, like some, some of us, the only way we communicate is on like WhatsApp or discord or, and if you call in, we could be streaming, especially for those of us who stream every day. So I don't know. I I'm surprised like Sneeko didn't double check or Charlie didn't double check, but at the same time, like maybe they just genuinely didn't think about it. I don't know, but I would feel kind of mortified if I thought I was just talking to somebody and I found out I had been, been streaming myself. Like, there's something about that that feels like a huge violation. An hour and 40 minutes in to realize you've been streamed to thousands of people and you didn't even know? Oh my God. I found his statements on the age of consent and children marrying adults being hideous. Absolutely revolting. And then he started arguing about, well, what is a child? We must de define a child, you know. It's not actually being under 18, it's, it's all. I think Sneeko's a child. <laughs> A bunch of hooey and i really think if you have to start arguing about well what technically is a child you're already way too far gone like that is so weird and in no uncertain terms multiple times throughout the debate sneeko says that he is okay with people that are aged 12 13 14 15 16 marrying adults that are 18 or older there are We're talking globally let's just talk globally like do you think it is okay for i'm not talking about just you specifically anymore anyone do you think it's okay for anyone in their 20s an adult to marry a 15 or 16 year old a 21 year old if if there was a, a marriage where the father consented and the daughter consented and it was both good on both families and they wanted to do it why am i going to get involved why should we get the government involved even get back a little bit do you think there's not a problem with a child being with an adult okay we haven't even agreed upon what the what a child and an adult is. You keep we, saying you keep saying that it's eighteen. Under eighteen, that's is child. And I'm telling you, that's not even the definition of the word. What is the number? I just it told needs you, to be a number, or else you can do the same thing. I just told you there's not a number. Do you, but do you see why that's a problem? No. That if there's no defined, 
So why, why can't a 12 year old marry an 18 year old? Because most 12 year olds haven't gone through puberty yet. And most 12 year olds, okay. what if they, as you just said, it changes. What if a 12 year old went through puberty early, the parents consent, the 18 year old and the parents consent, can they do it? Most likely that's not going to happen. You know why? Because Islamically, well, if, if we're not talking most likely, just say it. Uh, if, did, what did you say? What if a 12 year old went through puberty early, the parents consent, the 18 year old and the parents consent, can they do it? Most likely that's not going to happen. You know why? Because Islamically, well, if, if we're not talking most likely. Did he just say Islamically? Did he just say Islamically? Or most likely? Just say it. If the why? families have consented, the kid is mature. Is he doing this whole like, I'm Muslim and as a Muslim, I think marrying kids is good? Uh, Muslims, you might want to check Sneeko because the branding is not good. That is not good branding. The kid is ready. Why should I stop at 12 it? years old at 12 years old if the kid is is if the kid is physically mature the parents consent both parties are happy a 12 year old being physically mature if it's that's the only that's the only line that actually makes sense again I don't think a 14 year old can ever be physically mature mm -hmm. even though uh, even though they literally can even even though even though puberty actually defines that it's fine um, I don't Nope, I don't, I don't believe so. I was 14 once. What, I, I actually had a mustache when I was 14. Would you have looked at me and said I was physically mature enough to get married? If you were, if you were physically mature, if, if you were mature, yes, I would. Okay. Really? If you, if you were 14. Yeah. If you were 14 and you were ready to go and you, you met another 14 year old, yes, I would. No, 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 oh, we're oh, talking oh, adults. Oh. You, you keep going back to that. That is adult. I met. Physic I, I, I told you my definition. Oh, so, oh, not, oh, I told oh, you oh, the definition. The definition. Okay. If you were, went through puberty, you're an adult. That's the definition of adult. So yes, if you're an adult and you had a mustache, you're ready to get married, fine. Um. Okay. Unironically saying a 14 year old adult, I think would make most sensible people want to puke. There's so many instances of this and a lot of the conversation was spent with him talking about like overseas age of consent, like talking about how Japan's age of consent was 13 for the longest time, this and that. You know, this, okay, th okay, stop, hold on. When I, when I talk about the age of consent being nuanced everywhere, that's just to say that culture defines constructs. Age of consent is a construct. And I think we should make the age of consent 18 at the least, while acknowledging that going from 17 to 18 doesn't magically make you a mature person. You can be 50 and be very immature, right? So we want to harm reduce. And we want to be reasonable with the context of why this happens. Look, as a person who's Middle Eastern, who's a Syrian, who's born in the States, but her family's from Iraq, her parents are from Iraq, lots of people were married as children. That's true. That's just a fucking fact. And a lot of those people made it, quote, in quotations, work and had very happy families and all of that. That doesn't mean that we're not going to break generational curses and stop our children from having to do the same thing that our past generations had to go through to, quote, survive. And I think that's kind of what's missing here. As a lot of these situations are sort of the be the worst decision to make when you feel pushed into a corner. They shouldn't be the, the decisions you make when you have the privilege not to make them. The idea is if you're in a rational, reasonable situation, you have money and resources, the last thing you should be doing is forcing your kids into marriage or listening to your 12-year-old about wanting to get married. Give them a chance to be an adult and make that decision. Look, all of this is a construct. We make it up, right? We make up rules. I think we're evolved animals. I don't know what you believe, right? I don't think a God put me here. I don't think there is a God. So I have to do my best within my community to harm, reduce, and break those generational curses and break those traditional you know, expectations of behavior because they're not good for us. We learned a lot of our parents have trauma. A lot of our aunties and uncles and grandmas and grandpas have problems, OK, and we know because we were the consequence of those problems and those problems manifested in reasons we have to go to therapy now. So, again, like with peace and love. He's advocating for something that has always been happening and that's something we should stop. He's right that the age of consent in many places has been, quote, puberty or as young as 12 years old. We should stop that expectation of behavior because in the long run, it causes more harm than good. And what's the reason for that? What's the reason for causing the more harm? Laziness. An inability to say what was wrong was wrong and what's right is right. Now, here's the thing. And I think this is where everyone gets really stuck. Okay? They get really stuck. They feel bad admitting that it was wrong because they feel like if they admit it's wrong, everyone has the right to then hurt them or mob justice them or send them to prison. But I believe in, you know, 
restorative justice. I believe in rehabilitation. I believe in people doing bad and being good today. So I believe in all of that. I'm not trying to punish you because you did something wrong. I'm trying to get us to stop doing it so the next generation doesn't have to. You don't have to do this, of course. Nobody has to do this. But ultimately, Joy's right. I wouldn't trust Nico with my kids either. If you're advocating for children as young as 12 to be able to, quote, be with adults, I don't trust you around my children. If you're going to current modern day advocate for children to marry adults, I'm not gonna trust you around my kids. If you're somebody who's consistently dating very young people newly out of high school, and you're a much older person, I'm not gonna trust you around my kids. And I know this hurts a lot of people's feelings, but the truth is I can't trust you around my kids. Because when it came down to it, when you had the opportunity to protect a child, you did something even worse. Sneeko is facilitating. He's he's the reason the child will now be harmed. And he's advocating for those parents to basically pimp out their children to adults. I'm not going to trust you around my kids because you do not know how to keep a child safe. Now I know all the transphobes are going to come in and say, what about kids transitioning as minors? I think most of us would agree that children who are trans in complicated situations like any child with cancer or any child with a need to go to a therapist or any child who's experiencing something very unique to their situation, anyone who's the difference, any child who's disabled, any child who has high IQ, any child who's just different from the rest in that unique kind of way needs specialized care. And so trans kids need specialized care for something that's internally happening within themselves. A child who's being married off to somebody else, that's an external force coming in to force that child into a situation. Trans kids are having an internal experience that need that needs help. It doesn't mean, and I think Charlie's going to talk about it later, that we're going to do surgery on children. I don't know how many cases of minors getting surgery done is real, but kids have surgery done on them all the time. And I agree with waiting and being patient about it, but these two things are not analogous. Trans kids are having an internal experience. Internal, it's coming from them. They're telling you. The children getting married off to adults. Listen to Sneeko. If the father agrees, if the families agree, this is an external thing being put on the child. And yes, a 12-year-old might say they want to marry a 21-year-old, but please, for the love of God, just imagine it. I know that's gross. Just imagine a sweet, innocent 12-year-old and a 21-year-old gross adult having with that kid and tell me that's okay. That's fucking gross and you know it's gross. And I doubt, I really doubt Sneeko would let his daughter do that. And if he did, he's gross. I think you're gross. Break the generational curse, admit it's disgusting, and stop doing it to your kids. Uh, But the whole thing was like pulling teeth and it was fucking painful. And I think it's extremely alarming. And if Sneeko's willing to marry a kid, oh my God. Is Sneeko saying he's willing to marry a kid? Because that's kind of what he's saying. Hold Sneeko, 26, 27, right? Daya Waters says Sneeko would never marry a minor. He's not walking the walk for a reason. Well, what if he would? Is that what he's trying to tell us? Is Sneeko trying to tell us he would have the child? Thanks for letting us know, I guess. Perspective to have. Unironically calling a 14 year old and 12 year old mature enough for a marriage. Those are middle schoolers. Like, holy shit. I think that is extremely concerning to be advocating for something like that. Like, would Sneeko be okay if his best friend ended up marrying a 14 year old? Uh, he sh- certainly shouldn't be. No one should be okay with something like that. Like, that's fucking terrible. No, it's not even about someone else. It's really about you. We have to draw a line in the sand to protect children. We don't need children engaging in romantic relationships with adults. I don't know if Sneeko's entering the Islamic bubble and really confusing a lot of, like, their information or their scripture or if he's going into countries where this is legal so he's like normalizing himself in that bubble and culture but i definitely think he's trying to do something like when he said islamically it's like who are you talking to because whoever it is they're wrong as well i don't care if it's from islam or whatever is that what's happening is that what he's doing is he hearing some weird iman or whatever they're called like sitting there and telling him like this is no is that what's happening what is going on that is actually terrible But now, since I wasn't, like, holding him to this topic or making sure it stayed on the topic I thought we were talking about, it went all over the place with a ton of different things. But the big one, and this is what most people have focused on, which was my response to his question about kids transitioning. And the way he would pose that question would be by asking if I thought it was okay if kids who want to switch their gender go to the doctor and get their cut off. Is it okay if a nine-year-old goes to a doctor and gets their cut off right just a reminder that's not what happens blair white still has her penis last time i checked lots of trans people keep their penises lots of trans women keep their penises so these people that are like kids are chopping off their you don't have to 
And also a lot of people don't. Not everybody has to go through all of the surgeries to be considered trans. And obviously I don't need Blair White to confirm or if she's changed anything. But last time I checked, Blair talked about it publicly that she still has hers and that's great. And we love that for her. Doesn't make her less trans. So children do not have to get the surgery to be trans. Children don't have to get any surgeries to be trans. Trans affirming like uh, care can be changing clothes, changing name, doing your makeup differently, uh, doing something in just the outwardly appearance differently. Like if I had kids and they were trans, we would do trans affirming care, meaning like clothes, name, whatever makes you feel comfortable. And then we can talk about the perks or pros and cons of puberty blockers and everything else, which I know a lot of people bring up Jazz Jennings as an example. Jazz is like an experiment, as many kids are in the world of science for the next generation. And that is true that Jazz's specific surgery and her interaction with her transition wasn't as smooth. But Jazz is on her own journey, doesn't represent everyone's story. So just a reminder that you don't have to get the surgeries to be trans. You don't have to get the double mastectomies. You don't have to do any of it. If you would like to, that's great, but you don't have to. And most children certainly aren't getting them done. And when posed with that question, I replied with yes. And I've talked about this on stream many, many times now, and I'll talk about it again here. I thought he was talking in hyperbole. I thought he was just exaggerating, being over the top, talking about the entire subject of transitioning. I had no idea that any living, breathing human being actually thought that that's how transitioning works. Where you just go into a doctor saying, I feel like switching genders, and they lay you down on the operating table and just snip your whole fucking meat off. I didn't know that that's what he actually believed. It's because they don't know. And I think this is great that Charlie didn't realize that. And I think that's the problem that a lot of us have when having these conversations, is we're talking to people who have no idea what they're talking about. With peace and love, you just have no idea what you're talking about, which is why, again, I try to be very careful moving forward who I'm collabing with because I'm so sick of talking to people who don't know what they're talking about and then they don't know how to do anything but me met you. But Sneakle just doesn't know what he's talking about. He has no clue. Transphobes have no clue. because You know why they have no clue either? They're too afraid to do the research. They are genuinely, guys, if you're a transphobe, and you think to yourself, maybe I should make sure that I, I should be a transphobe. You don't go to other transphobes to double check the info. You, you can't know. You have to go outside of your bubble to research, to check yourself. You can't use your own bubble's data to confirm. That's, it's like nobody knows how to research. If Sneeko was truly interested in the truth, He'd be reading feminist theory. He'd be reading from trans ad ad advocates. He'd be reading the science. He'd be talking or listening to the scientists. He'd be looking at the data. But what he looks at is the biased data from his bubbles that tell him and reassure him, it's okay, Sneeko, you got it. Trans people, bad. Marrying 12-year-olds, good. Sneeko goes, okay. And that's it. That's the whole conversation. If I get one more message, if I see one more comment saying Kamala is not black, I'm going to slap you all figuratively, okay? It's like just Google. Like basically if you think Kamala isn't black as much as she is Indian, then you are basically telling me you are so dumb you can't even Google. Just a reminder that women are community builders and we go out and vote in ways that are profound Please vote in favor of your own civil rights this year. Please vote in favor of yourself because even pro-life women who voted conservative regret it now because when they had ectopic pregnancies, they couldn't get the medical care they needed and almost died. Please, for the sake of your own medical care, vote for your own rights and vote Kamala Harris this fall. Thank you. I, I didn't know he was speaking literally. I thought he was just referring to the entire process of transitioning and just using this over-the-top statement to encapsulate all of it. Because you literally cannot get that surgery unless you are 18. Like, you actually have to go out of your way to be that stupid on the topic than you would just spending a couple of seconds looking. They are, Charlie. They're very, they're doing it on purpose. Because if they don't look it up, then they don't know better. And they can double down it up there are very rare cases where someone under 18 has had that surgery performed that's not common so i really didn't think 
that someone could be so dumb on the topic. I thought he was just speaking in hyperbole, which nope. is my mistake. I should have been more clear instead of making an assumption that he was talking about something nuanced in an <laughs> over-the-top way. Yeah. I haven't hit- Charlie's so good faith. This take, and it's not a new take from me. I've talked about this a couple times throughout the years on stream. I have no complaints if a kid gets interested in transitioning and starts talking to their family about it. So their parents start talking to doctors, the kid starts talking to doctors and therapists and all of this because the process of transitioning is one that takes place over the course of many years. It's not something that just happens like that. And I'm also not afraid to admit that I am not the most educated when it comes to transitioning. I am not someone that has a ton of knowledge about the subject to be speaking on it in a really in-depth manner. But even I know these very surface level things that everyone has easy access to to understand. It is a long process. And I have no problems at all if a kid gets interested in that process and starts going through that process with proper care. Mm -hmm. And then when they reach the age where they can consider that surgery and decide they want to do it, then that's all power to them. That's entirely up to them. They have reached that age. They are, can now do that surgery if they want to. That is not a surgery that's being offered to like a nine-year-old who just says, I feel like changing genders today. It's just not how it works. And I didn't think that that's what was actually being discussed because it's so fucking silly. Now, I'm sure there's some really fringe cases you can point to where that kind of thing of did Of course, happen. look, there will always be fringe cases, right? There will always be people who are just bad faith. They're bad people. They happen to be doctors. They're bad people. They happen to be therapists. They're bad people. They happen to be parents. Obviously, sometimes people are bad, whatever that means, right? So you can't, again... Accuse everyone of being the same just because you've met one, two, three, four. I don't care if you've met 10 people who look and act the same as somebody else. There are billions of people on this planet. Billions. And millions of them are trans. Millions of them are trans. Millions. Okay? I don't care if you've met 1,500 trans people. There are millions of trans people in the world. Millions. Happen, but it's not common. Thus, I didn't think that's what was being referred to in the conversation. And it is, again, my mistake for not recognizing that at that moment, it was being spoken about literally. Mm. So all that shit that people keep dogpiling and spouting about me about how I want all kids to go out there and get their chopped off is just fucked up. Like, it's so it's so ridiculous. I recognize I did a horrible job of arguing in this debate, which... Isn't surprising considering I don't debate. This is not something that's in my skill set. Which of course led to some embarrassingly dog shit arguments. Like the one I've seen people reference a couple times is when I briefly mentioned sports in this topic. It was a stupid point to try and make. I was getting hit by like some rebound psychic damage listening to some of the drivel brain rot that Sneeko was spouting oh, about man. the age of consent. And I don't know why I thought this was like <laughs> an argument to try and make, but I brought up sports in this subject and I was going to try and elaborate on it, but didn't at all. What I was going to try and say is that when a kid gets interested in a sport, they'll talk to their parents about it. They'll research the sport, you know, go through the process of learning about it. And when it comes to transitioning, it's still a process where you talk to your family about it, you learn about it. Like, it was a, it's like, it wasn't a point where I was trying to say, well, changing genders is a lot like picking between baseball and soccer. Like, it's not what I was trying to get at, but because I didn't elaborate on it and it really wasn't a good argument to try and make in the first place, that's one people have harped on a lot. And I get it. Like I said, I am not a debater. Like, I didn't go in here expecting a debate. So I had nothing prepared here for this inundation of outrageous questions and tangents like there was a point where Sneeko was trying to get me to say white power oh. like the whole thing was a fucking mess it was without a doubt probably the worst debate that video has ever been cursed with and i really regret not doing a better job here it's not something i should have even it wasn't even charlie's responsibility to do a better job if he didn't even know he was being streamed for an hour and 40 minutes I think that's what's so crazy. If Charlie was literally in the the dark about being streamed for an hour and 40 minutes, well, then he even more didn't have a reason to be thoughtful because he didn't think he had an audience watching him. Been done in the first place. I just have a tendency to really hope for the best out of people. <sighs> and I was really hoping that I and most people were wrong about Sneeko's perspective on the age of consent. However, unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be the case. He was very adamant about this position, and I did a terrible job 
in arguing with him, and I did a terrible job of articulating my beliefs. I am supportive of the LGBTQ+, and I have been, and that's not something I've been shy about. I just wish Let's I did go. a better job of expressing that. To be open and honest here, and I've talked about this a lot, I've always treated my channel kind of like a diary for myself, which is why I just talk about so much different nonsense and so many things that I know a lot of people don't give a fuck about, but some of it's fun for me to talk about, or some of it's just things I care about. So being totally honest, I used to treat the internet as an escape from my dog shit real life. Truly unhappy, really hated most of everything about myself, and the internet was my escape from it. But now it's really become that real life is the escapism for me now. Like, I love posting and creating things, but I don't like interacting with the internet around me anymore. And it's something that I started to realize a couple months ago, and I've talked about it on stream a little mm. bit, how... This is why when I thought he was leaving the internet, I thought, oh, good for Charlie. Because, yeah, I can imagine it eventually getting very exhausting. Because I've covered so many, like, drama stories and everything, it's pretty much all that I ever get told about when I'm streaming. And it's become such a massive headache. And it's just constant negativity that I'm fully flooded with, like, at all hours. Like I Ludwig said the same thing. I even told my partner the same thing. I was like, damn, I, I'm getting physically drained reporting on these, you know, age of consent stories over and over again. It's like, it's draining me. I'm exhausted. I don't like, you know, it's one thing to cover something sometimes, but all every day, all week, it's too much. And then Ludwig said the same thing. Charlie's saying the same thing. Like, I know the internet wants the YouTubers to be like, cover this, cover this, cover this. Y'all. There's too many and I'm tired. And this is why social workers are tired. This is why your community members are tired. Everybody's tired. The emotional labor that YouTubers also have to go through in reporting these stories and then having the backlash from their audiences. It's a lot. I mean, the views are there, but it's a lot. I am in like this human centipede of eating someone's ass while having my ass eaten with even more things that I'm being demanded to like talk about where everything just feels like a lose-lose and it has been for like the last six or eight months I feel where if I talk about something it's a problem even if something is cut and dry as like Cody Ko having sex with a 17 year old being bad I caught a lot of 16 allegedly a shit for that too I'm sure a lot of people probably didn't see that but man the amount of emails I got and a lot of the things I was seeing even something as cut and dry as that was an issue when I talked about it. And then if I don't talk about something, or if I don't talk about something fast enough in the time that some people think is appropriate, I'm then accused of covering up for something for an ulterior evil motive. So mm -hmm. it just really feels like a rock and a hard place where regardless... Also, is wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait. Technically, if Ava was talking to a 14-year-old... Sneeko would be okay with it, actually, as long as the 14-year-old parents said it was okay and the 14-year-old wanted it. And even though that 14-year-old is now in their 20s and said nothing happened. Wait a second. Oh. Wait. Oh. Technically. Technically, Sneeko would be pro. Not that I'm condoning Ava's actions. Allegedly, if they happened, okay. Technically, Sneeko would be okay with it. That's what I'm hearing. It's just going to be a massive flood of negativity. And a huge critique of me that I've always seen is Charlie's a fence sitter. He's just a fucking fence sitting enlightened centrist cuck this and that. <laughs> and I've always said for the entire time I've been on the internet, I'm not special. I'm literally just a normal guy who got very lucky. I just sit here, joke about shit, talk about my opinion on things, and nothing else. I don't have a unique perspective on things. I don't have deep insight into the vicissitudes of certain things. You know what? Based self-awareness, Charlie. Approve. This is why I think my audience wanted me to watch this video. Based self-awareness, my friend. Based self-awareness. I am literally just a guy who yaps has some fun, talks about shit, does some wacky stuff as well, and that's it. It's just not that deep. But because everything is so inflammatory and charged online, it's being perceived in the last, I'd say like the last two years, it's mm -hmm. really popped off, mm -hmm. as me making deliberate attempts to appease both sides and play right down the middle to soak up as much as possible. Like it's, it's all this like nefarious scheme where I'm doing this with my hands. And I just don't understand how it's become so 
incendiary where that's apparently like a really bad thing now. My opinion is not special, and my opinion isn't one that's pandering to any sides or catering to anything. It's literally just whatever's up here. I sit down for like 30 to 45 minutes on like a topic or like a video that I'm joking around about, and I talk about it. I am legitimately just an average, well, below average height guy who's about to turn 30. I'm not just spitting hot takes out the wazoo here. I'm just being myself. That's all this mm. channel ever has been. And now it's become super controversial to do that if it's not like, you know, picking sides on everything, it seems. And it's very frustrating. For the longest time, it was just me having fun. And for the most part, it still is. But I've started to recognize over the last few months that some of the things I do just really aren't fun for me to do and I've been doing them out of obligation. Mm -hmm. Mainly internet drama. When I initially started covering drama so many years ago now, it was fun because it wasn't as serious. Like the stories were a lot, you know, more quirky. It, it was easy to get invested because it was kind of just like a soap opera, like a really dumb soap opera. But recently it's been much more serious and I feel the need to talk about these things because a lot of them are extremely serious with very important topics to discuss. But it has become draining. As much as I never wanted to admit it, I've started to recognize that my mood is immediately impacted by whatever I read on Twitter in the morning. If that's so- I took Twitter off my phone. I don't like Twitter because Twitter's not- it's not like you have a Twitter page and it's like your own little ecosystem. It's just like an open forum and it exhausts me. So I only have Twitter on my desktop, on my computer, and I just use it to like pimp out my videos. And that's what I do. And I call it a day. But like sometimes I go there to see the headlines and news and stuff, obviously. But I don't use Twitter as my like primary place anymore because it's just exhausting to have it on my phone. So I took it off my phone. Ugh, but I will say it is very bad to look at Twitter. Also, even my comment sections, I need to interact with it less, like for my own mental health. I think it's better, uh, especially since I tend to look at it in the morning and at night. Horrible times to look at a comment section. But I probably will be, like, be more selective about who I respond to, maybe members or maybe just like, you know, I just I can't be having conversations in my comment sections like Brittany. OK. I need to be better about that. Like open with boundaries, guys, open with boundaries. But at the same time, I'd love to see you guys have comments. So please comment away, like have comment conversations in the comments. I just, as a content creator, sometimes I'll like see these comments and my brain as a person just wants to be like, I didn't even say that. I said this, but then if I start arguing in the comments then that's time not being spent making content and that just seems silly. So keep having comment section, comment conversations. I just need to have boundaries. So no Twitter on my phone and I can't be commenting early in the morning. Oof, girl. Some horrible stuff about a creator or what have you, it immediately affects my entire day and mm -hmm. my whole outlook on the day. Now I know, wah, call the wambulance, get some French cries, just fucking whining about having to talk about drama. What a, what a stupid problem to be upset about. But I'm just trying to explain that it hasn't been as fun recently. It hasn't. And the main thing, if you've been around the channel for a while, is I've always wanted this to be fun and never mm. feel like a job. And as hard as it is for me to admit this, a lot of this kind of stuff, it has just started to feel like less fun and more of, well, got to do this because I'm expected to. Like anytime I go live, most of chat is just telling me about the latest in whatever's happening in the creator space or some other like extremely negative thing going on mm -hmm. that's like okay well i'm going to have what, to what uh, what do you guys think the purpose of youtube should be what do you guys what in your minds as a consumer what is the purpose of youtube what do you come to youtube for so i come for commentary i come for news i come for trending and uh yeah it's like where i come to like listen to almost like my radio shows my news shows everything and then i just listen to a lot of audiobooks but that's off of YouTube, right? So what do you specifically come to YouTube for? I guess just to listen. Yeah, I guess it's just where I come to hear people say things and report on things. Yeah. Where, what do you guys come to YouTube for? I learn all about that once I turn stream off. So then I spend a few hours learning about these things. And it's all just really upsetting stuff. Like it's not happy. It's all very sad, bad stuff. And it's been making me not happy. 
So I definitely think I'll be slowing down on covering internet related drama or like drama in general. I'll still talk about like really wacky stories and shit like that. But I interesting that everyone's burning out at the same time. That's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting that loot is burning, burning out. Charlie's burning out because it's a lot. But they're probably it's just because of the cycle we just had. I think that's what it is, more or less. I definitely think I'm gonna be pumping the brakes on like the, the kind of drama I have been covering recently. And instead, I'm gonna go back to focusing on the content that I'm most happy with. Like, if you ask me what content I'm most proud of throughout my entire time on this platform for the last like 17, 18 years, none of it would be drama coverage. Mm. It'd be things like Skynut. It'd be things like shooting a potato at a tennis racket to see if you can make french fries in midair by frying them in hot oil. It's, it's shit like that. And I think I'm going to go back to that kind of stuff as opposed to the direction that I have been going recently. So, yeah, this was a lot to go over here, but uh, I hope this has cleared everything up. And, uh, yeah, that's really about it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, this was great. This was really good. I'm glad you guys recommended that to me. I do think it's a very uh, uni a very common experience that is happening right now on YouTube where people are getting overwhelmed. I even watched Tectone, Emmy, and Asman talk about this on their podcast where just keeping up with the Mr. B story is almost exhausting because there's new crazy 500-page leaks, whatever, every day. It just feels like too much. And I think there's something... To that is just know your own limitations. Know what know what the thing, know what is the thing that is making your life more negative or draining you. And for me, for sure, like uh, just consent. For me, it's the consent stuff. It's just so exhausting to keep talking about it because there's so many bubbles that cover it. But I will say, I still want to review like relationship stuff, and I still want to review, you know, ways I think people could do things slightly like better or more informed, but at the same time, like no judgment. It's a journey. I still want to review things that might be drama adjacent. I just don't have to do every single story that came out. Like the Mr. B scam story, I just didn't want to do it. I know someone, some of you asked me to do it. I just don't think it's that interesting, but I will say, uh, you know, if Jimmy breaks the law, if he's doing something bad, he should be held accountable, especially if he's doing like anything like gambling with children, right? I'm not a big fan of things that are about kids giving you money. I just feel like kids shouldn't be able to give anybody money from loot boxes on Fortnite or whatever to Mr. Beast. I just feel like why do kids have money to give adults? Like when I was a kid, you washed cars to have your own money to go to the store to buy hot Cheetos and then go to the school to skateboard. That's what you did as a kid with your money. So I'm a little frustrated, I think, that kids are being sort of selected and targeted as, like, targets for money. Like, ew, it's so gross. It's gross. And I know I, there's a whole toy industry, and I understand that, but gosh, the parents are supposed to be the boundary setters. The parents are supposed to be the ones who say, you can have this many new toys a year, or this is how we're going to spend our money as a family. So I guess, you know. It's always disappointing to see people specifically targeting kids in order to exploit them. It's just so exhausting. So with that said, great Charlie moment. I definitely gave me a new energy to him. Still probably not a YouTuber that's directly for me since I mostly just listen to philosophy podcasts. But at the same time, good for Charlie to be so self-aware and to know his own limitations because I think all of us should practice knowing our own limitations. All right, good video. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then